I've now highlighted a sample that I'm going to use to demonstrate using the fade tool but in a more exciting way, in a kind of hidden way. So obviously we're all used to using fade, let's just listen to this sound with the fade. So you can hear the samples just slowly creeping up in volume, which is great, something I use all the time. So now let's use the fade tool in another way, which will show you how to create a slow down section in the same way. Let's have a go at that. So in the same way that we would create a fade, we just access the fade tool. And I'm just going to apply to the end of the section. So we've got a normal fade there in the beginning. I'm actually just going to shorten this entire thing so we get a more dramatic effect. And then I just use the control button. And you can see at the moment it's highlighted on fade. I'm going to switch that to slow down section. So now we should hear the fade come in slowly. <coughs> sample slows down. So we can hear it building up slowly with the normal fade and then we have the red coloured fade which gives us a really cool slow down. And that's something you'll hear in a lot of dance music as well these days, these kind of slow down section. It works just as well on vocal for example. Um, it's just a really cool effect and I hope that you'll use it. So another one I use all the time is the hide function. Now I'm quite messy when I work, but in order to quickly clean up my main window. So at the moment you can see I've got quite a neat looking screen. If I now press H, you'll see all the ideas that I didn't use. Can you see here the little H is um, in green beside? So any tracks I want to hide. So for example, I could just hide all of my tracks, pretty much. And then I just hit the H and the H now turns orange. Now it's H on the keyboard as well, will work as well as clicking the button. You can see how useful this function is when you really want to, if you're working with a client, clean up your window. But also this is just really good for, I think, working creatively and looking at a nice neat screen is quite a good function to learn. So now I just want to show you a couple of kind of one trick ponies. You just press the button and it activates a function which I've seen with my students at um, BIM studying music production would be kind of baffled as to why they were recording their vocal and their vocal seemed like it was coming out of the microphone a second later from when they were speaking. Now this is called latency. There's some very quick ways to kind of shortcut the system in order to get the least latency possible. One of those is just using the low latency button, which I've got here. Um, when you activate it in orange, it immediately means that when you're in a record channel, you won't get that delay between your voice. Now, this can also be something that may need to be adjusted in your audio buffer, which is in the preferences section. Now, you can see at the moment I'm on the kind of highest buffer because I've been mixing tracks. But another way to get the lowest latency is change that buffer down to the smallest buffer size, which means you'll be getting the lowest latency. The least gap in between when your vocal comes out and when the machine plays it back to you in your monitors, normally your headphones. Just remember when you're mixing to move that buffer size back up because you want to get the maximum, basically your sound quality will be improved. And when you're mixing and using a lot of plugins at the final stages, that's when we should be increasing the, this buffer size. So I'll just stick with the same track for the moment to show you another one of my favourite functions, which is the skip function. So when you're arranging, this is just great. Say you've worked with your loops, you've put down a basic arrangement, but then you still kind of want to make changes without having to kind of trigger your loops again and build a whole arrangement. It's really easy, just creating a loop, but instead dragging backwards. So at the moment I was just working on this little breakdown section. So you can create a normal loop, and then you just hit the command button and click. Now it will jump. And now it will just jump that section. Bouncing place is just a really great way to kind of free up the processing of your computer and also to just imprint things like your MIDI files and things that are coming from plugins in case you lose those plugins or for some reason they're not loading when you want them to and you're literally about to work on the studio on the track. So I really recommend doing this bouncing in place when I first started working kind of as an assistant, this was one of my main jobs, would be bouncing all of the tracks into the computer as audio. This also can free up processing power when you're at the end of your mix and maybe you haven't got the latest equipment and you just want to make sure that your computer is running really smoothly. The smoother it runs, the less clicks and pops that you can end up having and sometimes that can deteriorate the audio quality. So this can be a really important step. So let's have a look at some of the bouncing in place. So one of the really quick ways to bounce in place is to actually open our 
toolbar, which is all completely customizable as well. And you can see here, we've got some of the most kind of commonly used. So one of them is bounce in place. So let's say I just want to bounce this little droplets one. I just literally hit bounce region. I don't have to set up a loop or anything. I just select it. So as soon as it's selected, I bounce the region and it's going to call it bounce in place as well. So you've already kind of got a name and it will just bounce a copy underneath. And you can see now it's a blue audio file instead. So if we just zoom in, just using my magnifying glass there, control option. And you can see instead of now being the MIDI information, it's actually recorded it as an audio file. So another little tip of advice, something that I use quite often.